G'day and welcome to my series where we take inexpensive hardware, uh, put open source software on it, uh, and then basically create um, a server for a small business that's an alternative to the mainstream Microsoft software. Today we're going to look actually inst of installing the Microsoft SQL server um, onto a Linux LXC container running on a Proxmox cluster. So for that I'm following this uh, document here. You'll note the URL there. You can actually uh, do a Google search for it or, um, or you can type it in as you see it in this video. It is subject to change over time. So what you'll need to do is, this is talking about uh, using Ubuntu 20.04 as its base. So for that, in your Proxmox um, setup, you'll have to make sure in templates you download the Ubuntu 20.04 standard template. So what you want to do is you want to create a container and you want that container to have a host name as per any container and then put in your root password pick your Ubuntu standard container there a template to create and then create a disk size now if you're just running a single database that might have only a hundred thousand records in it you probably won't need more than 64 gigabytes of disk space, uh, but you'll have to size it accordingly. Give it a couple of CPUs. You'll note here it does say that you will need a minimum of two gigabytes of memory. I actually find four gigabytes of memory just runs it more stable. And of course, if you've got a much more complex database or a lot of clients, you may need more memory again. But I'm, I'm writing this or creating this video for small businesses, small businesses that might have 15 to 30 employees. So I don't think you'd probably need more than that. Finally, um, give your container an IP address that's on the same subnet as your router. And don't forget to put your router in for the gateway there. DNS you can leave the same and off it will go. And as you can see, it's now created off the template, a new container for me. So the next step is set your Proxmox settings appropriately. So we want our container to start at boot with the, the box and it loads up. Um, and basically the next step is to start the console. Now being a container, these things load very quickly. And simply log on with the root password you created in the setup. Now Ubuntu, if you install Ubuntu off an ISO into a virtual machine, it normally comes with sudo, sudo pre-installed. But Ubuntu that comes from the Proxmox templates um, does not have sudo. So you can simply run all the apt commands and all the various commands without having to put the sudo in front, which I think is faster. Not sure if it's more secure, probably isn't, um, but this video is all about um, installing Microsoft SQL Server. It's not so much about hardening, security hardening. Okay, so if the first thing we've done is up, done an apt update, and then we want to do an apt upgrade because we want to make sure our software uh, of our Ubuntu um, operating system is running on the latest and greatest. So I'm going to pause the video at this point because this will take a few minutes. Okay and we're back and as you can see my apt upgrade command is almost finished. It actually didn't take that long. It was probably only a couple of moments, a couple of minutes there. But we're now back at the prompt ready for the next command. So as we progress through this document for installing SQL Server you can see that we have to run this wget command to get um, a special gpg key. We have to then add a repository. 
Now, a lot of that won't work with the default installation of Ubuntu without first uh, putting some prerequisite software in. So the first lot of software that you'll have to run um, is this command here, which uh, installs um, these software libraries. So that will allow the first wget command to run and um, the apt key command. The second one you'll have to run to install some more prerequisites is this software properties common. That will then allow the app, add apt repository command to be run. So we'll just have those run through like so. Okay, so now we're in a position where we can run our first command from here. And it ran perfectly. And then just pick the 20.04 version. We're going to run this command, so I'll just copy and paste it in. But remember, you don't need the sudo in front. So that's now adding that Microsoft repository in. If we go down further now, it's just a matter of running apt update. And then apt um, install MSSQL server. I'll copy the command over, but we don't actually use all of that command. Just to simplify it, we just run apt install. And that will now install all the files required to get Microsoft SQL Server um, up and running. Now again, this will take a little bit of time. You'll notice that it said that it needs to download about uh, 1.3 gigabytes worth of data. Uh, so once again, I'm just going to pause the video while we wait for that to occur. And I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, and we're back once again, and again, that didn't actually take too long, about another minute or so. Uh, but you can now see we're at the next step, which is to set up the Microsoft SQL. Um, so it actually tells you the command to run, and once again, you don't need the sudo component. So I'll copy and I'll paste that into the command line there. The first question it's going to ask you is what version of my SQL... Uh, Microsoft SQL uh, that you want to run. Um, now for this video I'm going to run the free version, the ex what's called Microsoft SQL Server Express and for most people with a small business that's all you'll actually need. Um, the, the careful thing here is to create what's called the SA password, Server Admin Password. So I'm just going to create that now. And that's now going off and configuring the SQL server. And again, as you can see, it actually doesn't take that long. Finally, we just have to make sure that the um, SQL server is actually running. And to do that, you just run that command. And if everything's green like it is there, uh, then that means that is running. And you can see that it says it's all enabled and ready to go. Okay, so the next step is we've now got a running SQL um, server, the Microsoft SQL server, is to download onto your Windows machine the SQL Server Management Studio. So download that um, and install it. That's about another gigabyte's worth of download. Uh, and once you install it, you will have... Um, a product that looks something like this. Uh, so just search for it in your start menu and then you want to connect. SQL um, is, the, is the name I gave my SQL server. You may have a different name there or you can use the IP address you gave it and put that in there. And then of course you've got the SA password that you created in that, uh, that config script. If you do that, if all goes well, 
you will then see the default system databases that are installed. You can also see where you can define your uh, new logons and you can, can create new databases. So effectively, this is ready to go. It is now um, able to, you're able to have your applications connect to it. Um, and obviously if you're using different development tools or different products, there's multiple ways you can connect to this server. It just works um, in the same way an SQL server would work um, under Windows. Um, so that's if it was running under Windows. So that that's pretty good. Obviously, the the best thing about uh, this um, coupled with Proxmox is the fact that we now can introduce replication, where we replicate this to another Proxmox node. So I could have that happen every 15 minutes or even every minute or every hour if we wanted to. And of course, you can also create backups um, of your SQL database. So you can have multiple copies of that. Um, I mean, you can still make use of the backup features that are in the SQL server itself as well. Um, or you can do dumps using the tools, the development tools you're using or the software you're using might support that. But overall, um, the very fact that you can very create quickly create an SQL server that runs in a container that is replicated and backed up using Proxmox all for, for nothing, I think is, is pretty powerful. My name is Solomon Box and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, please feel free to watch others in my channel. Take care.